How do guys, it's Luke at Luke's Affordable Paint Service again. Uh, coming at you with a video that I didn't think any of you would want. <laughs> um, it turns out that you do. Um, now, I posted up a picture uh, all over, uh, well I say all over, about four pages, about some flock that I'd made. Now, it is, it's, it's a very well known how to make flock, it's just sawdust and paint. Um, but people were shocked at how fine I got it and things like that. So this is why I'm going to do the video. And people were also interested in the colour. I said it's a very nice, rich colour that you've got. So I'm going to discuss how I've done it. Uh, Viv, uh, rubbish in, rubbish out, great channel. I mean, that's probably what spurred me on to do it, because when I came into the hobby two years ago now, um, I watched a lot of the rubbish in, rubbish out stuff with the knowledge I knew from decorating and things like that, and it really made sense. Because I thought, will that work? And then you type stuff in, and Viv were one of the main videos that popped up. Terrain Tutor, uh, but his is a lot more, um, you know, using proper model products um, and, and using some trade products. But but I used the two together to, to make my channel, really, uh, alongside with some stuff that I already knew. So, <clears throat> with... With what I've done, so for colours, I don't know whether this is naughty <laughs> or anything, but what I did is I had some Jarvis Scenics uh, packs that I had a little bit of each in. Um, like an idiot though, I've mixed them all together now since having them colour matched. I should have left them separate for a um, should have left them separate for a comparison video, um, but I mixed them together like an idiot, so I'm going to have to actually order some more. Um, but what I did is I went to my paint place. Uh, it's called Johnson's, it's not far from here. Uh, I've got account, an account with them. Um, and what I did is I went with the, the colours and I, the bags of flock and I, I matched them up and colour matched them as close as I could. Now, I was talking to the, the woman behind the counter and she said, well, they're about £10 a litre, I think about 12, 10, 11 pounds a litre of paint, which is a lot of money if you're making your own flock because that makes it nearly 30 quid for three colours. Uh, well, 35 quid for three colours. But she said, I think we've got some of them paints in uh, uh, seconds and returns. And I was like, uh, or damages. So I went, oh, brilliant. So she gave me a paint opener and we went through them. And I found two out of the colours that I wanted. Uh, and she's given me a colour that's close, but I'm going to have to mix it myself. Now, I wouldn't advise doing that if you're going to make a lot and you want to, you know, um, just keep on top of it and have it the same all the time, uh, because when you mix it yourself, it is going to be slightly different. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I'm like that, you know, that off the cuff, if it works, it works, if it doesn't, throw it away. <laughs> so I'm going to use the two colours that have been mixed in the video, and the ones that I'm going to mix myself, I'm just going to trick a bit of acrylic and emulsion. It's all water-based, guys, so you can mix the two together. doesn't make any difference, okay? But with the seconds, this tin worked out at two quid, and this tin worked out at a pound, okay? Now, I'll get the tape off and show you, and I'll show you how to mix it. But don't be afraid to go into the trade stores, guys, okay? Get yourself in there and say, have you got any returns or seconds? And just have a look. Uh, and then if they haven't actually sorted them out or anything, just pop some lids off and go, well, that's, that's near enough. And you can always mix a bit of colour in and things like that. And rather than spending 10, 12 pounds on a, a litre of paint, which is a lot because you water this down as well, um, it's two quid. So it's even cheaper than going to your pound shop and getting a little poster paint pot or an, a, a little artist acrylic. Okay, so that's my that's another little tip uh, which some people might not do. All right, so what you need to get yourself get yourself a sieve, get yourself some sawdust powder, flour. Um, a fine sawdust, whatever people call it. Um, or the other tip is you get some the finest sawdust you can find and then you blend it, sieve it, blend it, paint it ass, but that's how you do it if you can't get all of the powder. Okay. I'm lucky enough, I just went to my woodyard at End at Road, said, Have you got any powder? The big sawdust and thick sawdust, they bag it up and sell it to uh, companies that bag it, repackage it for. Uh, so, you know, sawdust bedding for animals and things, but the powder is just a, a waste product that nobody wants. Um, so I was very lucky, went down and he gave me two sacks full and I can just keep going. He says, I said, if I went every day, I could have a sack, couple of sacks a day. So it was brilliant. So I know I can make unlimited amounts of this. I've already got four sacks in shed. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to show you how I do it, guys. I have talked quite a bit already. So if you're still listening, good <laughs> but anyway what i'll do is i'll show you how to get set up and then so get a sieve get some uh big 
tubs, buckets, whatever. Oh, well, I've got some big tubs so I can just seal it once they're dry. All right? And get yourself some trays because you need to pour it to leave it to dry a little bit. All right? So I'll get set up and I'll catch right, you guys. a little bit. So once you're set up, what you need to get yourself is get yourself a tub. This is a mucky one. I cracked it the other day when I made the stuff, uh, the darker green stuff, which is this stuff, look. Okay. Um, I made this with uh, some emulsion that I had in. Uh, the shed. Um, it is a bit synthetic -y looking but the dark green when I mix some lighter greens into it it'd be really good for trees and hedges and things like that so that's what I'm going to use that stuff for okay now the green I got which is very 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 close uh, to the uh, what do you call it Jarvis Scenics uh, dark to mid green stuff okay um, now what you need to do first is pour in the paint now Depending on the size of your tub, don't fill the bottom, but nearly fill the bottom, if you know what I mean. It wants to be about, what, half a centimetre deep. Add some water. Again, saves on time, as in, what, probably a quarter of a cup. A couple of splashes of soap. Don't matter whether it's fairy liquid soap or whatever, it all works, guys, okay? Give it a mix. Um, like I say, it, can't, it doesn't matter about the paint being overly thin you just want because with emulsion the paint pigments good anyway okay um, so that's why I like using emulsion one it's cheap as chips especially if you can get seconds uh, and two I mean look at that I've watered it right down and the, it's actually sticking to the side of the pot uh, you can't see but it's actually sticking right to the side of the pot where I'm painting look without running and that's with quite a lot of water in it's quite runny still um so it's always good to use emulsion uh i used acrylic yesterday um I, well, the stuff from pound shop things like that and I used about half a tub of paint really watered it down so you could you know it's, it says cheap to do it at the pound shop and acrylic does dry quicker than emulsion so it is a bit better but the amount of emulsion i've got for two quid it just doesn't make sense <laughs> all right so next thing you need to do Get a sieve. All right. Now at this point, it don't need to be over the top right or anything like that. It is very trial and error getting the uh, the stuff right. So all you need to do is just start sieving it through. Okay. Um, don't matter if any spills off the side, guys, because we do re sieve it once it's dry. Um, that is completely up to you, but it's how you get really fine. Um, depends if you want coarse or fine stuff, really. I mean, I could just pour this in and then sieve it at the end, but I've had better results doing it this way. All right. Um, what I might do then, guys, is once I've got them out of... Yeah, I'll, I'll sieve this through because it takes a couple of minutes to sieve in and I, I don't know what to talk to you about. So I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll just send the video here um, and then once I've done a couple of sieves full, I'll show you how much is in. All right, I'll catch you well, in a second. at this point, guys, I just thought I'd show you this coarser stuff that's left over in the sieve. Um, don't throw that away uh, because with flocks, if you look at flock packs, they do a coarse ground flock as well, which is the same colours. Save that, and when you make a mix batch, just make some coarse ground ones, all right? So you get two products for the price of one, okay? Just make sure you save that on another lid or something like that because we'll use that in another video, uh, making coarse ground. Well, I might not even make a video. It's, it's exactly the same process. Um, it's just with coarser flocks that you don't have to sieve as much, all right? So... I'm still doing this. I've, I've added one sieve full of uh, flock. I'm probably going to do about three or four sieves full, and then I'll show you. And then what would, what you do is you add more and more till you're happy. Okay. Right, Catch guys. So I've got about five, six sieves full of uh, sieved flock in there at the minute. On top of that paint that you saw me put in, so about half a centimetre of paint to six sieves full of flock so far. Um, the difference from sieving it is that's the sieve stuff. There, like that, and that's the not sieve stuff. So there's a definite difference, as in that's quite coarse and grainy, um, and that's very fluffy, it's like, like, like flour, but not ground very hard. Um, but when you re sieve it, it gets even better. Okay, so get yourself a, a stirrer. This is just a piece of wood wrapped in tape. <laughs> um, so, and then all you've got to do, guys, is literally just start mixing it up. Okay like that. Let's 
so you can see in there like that look you can see it's starting to change color now i don't think i've put enough paint in there but all you've got to do is add a bit more paint you can always just add water but without much flock in there hasn't got any paint on uh, we'll just uh, add another splash of paint um, and another splash of water like that and then we start stirring it again okay now people are asking you know how do you dry it and things like that what you have to keep doing is once you've got it all mixed and it's all looking the same color and the paints adhering to the to the stuff like that all you have to do is add more sawdust guys okay um or a bit more water um in this case you see how it's nearly the right color um but you've got some grains of sawdust left rather than adding more paint at that point just add a splash of water guys because that'll re-stimulate the paint that's absorbed um and then that'll then get rid of all the the pale bits of wood it's in there okay it is quite hard work because as it starts to dry out it gets uh, quite tough but that's what we want it'd be better if i had a food processor so i could mix it by get a machine to mix it rather than me doing it um but yeah right guys that's about right so you saw how simple that was as in literally you see that's a really nice consistency and it's nearly dry okay because the sawdust dries the paint out okay now what what you do then is once you've got it how you want it i'll just make sure that there's no tint bottom that i've missed once you're happy with what you've got you just pour it onto a tray stick it outside for a couple of hours to dry it sun or especially what eat it is at the minute at home um, and then you can repeat because i'm going to do two or three of these at this size uh, just so i can uh, fill a tub okay and this is a very nice dark green it doesn't look too synthetic or ungreen uh, if you know what i mean um, and that way that it just looks nice okay so literally get your uh, let me move some of this stuff out of the way guys sorry i'm very unorganized today i think the heat's playing havoc with me get a tray and let you just pour it in i mean you could even put it in oven to dry it out guys if you wanted uh, in my batch that i did yesterday um i put pva glue in one and pva glue in an, and no pva glue in the other one the reason i haven't done it in this video is because it makes no difference <laughs> so um the pva glue in my head was to add resilience to it uh, but it doesn't make any difference at all guys okay now best thing to do is when you pour it on a tray like this just fluff it up like that and then what happens is while that's drying out just keep going out and get every couple of hours just give it a flick with your hands you know just rake it over all right but as you can see guys that's a that's a gorgeous color and it's almost resembling flock um it's just a bit clumpy because it's wet um you could at this point add more sawdust and mix it again and some of that cut you know because the color's coming off in my hands still um so that would rub off onto more sawdust i just like to keep the tone that tone is nice uh, it's slightly changed from the can but only little uh, and that's how i mix it to keep a nice strong tone rather than it being faded all right so i'm going to stick this outside i'm going to knock up a my, my lighter green that i've got laying around and i'm also testing using gloss paints now it's not for a glossy finish uh, because it wouldn't give a glossy finish uh, what the gloss is for is so for example once you put your flock on your board and you spray it you normally get leakage don't you okay uh, as in the color fades and it gets all over everything okay and it blends together it's great it is great in some circumstances because you get a really nice great uh, gradient uh, in your colors when it blends together 
but if you don't want that it's very annoying so I'm going to use gloss and the reason I'll use gloss is because it's an oil based paint so when you spray it with water it won't you know leak anywhere so that's another tip uh, I'm going to try it though and see see if there's any differences or anything like that see if it absorbs well or you know but we'll yet to try so I've got a tin of uh, a paint that were a second as well in gloss just to give it a shot for you all right sorry about the length of this video but i'm talking and trying to show you how quick and simple it is all right in a bit right guys i'm just making up some mid to pale green like greeny yellow stuff like the really light green stuff um and this is a good good way of showing you what i mean about it's okay but you could add a bit more sawdust okay see how it's clumping together and it's quite coarse okay all you've got to do is, at this point is just sieve out some more okay um i just started to show you this because i didn't show you on the other one okay and what you do is just add a bit more just add a, a sieve full at a time and a splash of water to help it and then what you get is you get well you get one you're getting a bit more out of it and uh, two it just it dries a hell of a lot quicker when you do it like that guys okay so splash of water literally maybe a, a shot of water went in then okay and then what that does is can you see how already it's turned that to light green could even have another one okay so what i'll do is i'll add another another sieve or maybe two actually because it's still quite clumpy okay and that as you add more it dries it out okay so that's what i'm doing all right i'll see you right guys so now uh once your flock's dry it looks like this it's it's not clumpy but there's little bits of clumps and stuff like that in it uh, this is a batch i made yesterday um this is what i'm going to use for my trees and things like that i'm going to put some yellow and uh, other flocks you know for when i do my bushes and things like that that's what this flock's for all right um so the flock that i'm showing you at the beginning that's for like flooring and stuff like that that's why i had the paint color matched okay so when your flocks i mean this is nearly dry it's not completely dry but it's it's fine to start putting it away okay i'm going to re-sieve it now the reason i'm re-sieving it is just to make it even finer and then what i'll do with the stuff that's um doesn't go through the sieve i'll keep that as coarse ground stuff as well all right guys so literally just grab an handful uh, put some it down so you don't get it all over and then literally just start re-sieving this stuff okay um like i say it would be better to wait till it's completely dry um but i'm just running out of time that's all guys um i've got one more day left and i've got so much commission work to do but the fact the problem is is i've got a lot of commission work to do but it's that hot i can't even paint the brush the, the paint's drying on the brush as i'm working um i've been looking at air conditioning units for <laughs> and all sorts as i said for like two three weeks a year that it's hot it seems to be doing it while i'm off and need to be working <laughs> so uh, yeah i'm not happy but hey ho it's good weather right guys so as you can see that's uh, starting to sieve through quite well um, and what you're left with is the really nice powdery stuff okay it's very fine now okay um, and like i said when that's properly dry as well it'll be even thinner and it'll resemble almost the jarvis stuff uh, like i say the other the other paints that i've had have been color matched to the packs of jarvis stuff okay so i'll carry on doing this to the whole lot of this and then what i'll do is i'll uh, I'll, I'll end the video uh, because you know I'll, I'll take some pictures and put them up on my page of the color match stuff when that's finished all right guys so i crack on and i'll catch you in a bit right guys so you saw how simple that was uh making your own flock is really effective it's such a it's such a money saver uh, especially if you're building boards uh, i mean i'm building so many like two or three boards at the minute and um, it's just going to save a fortune so you'll actually get to see me using my own flock uh, and see how nice it can look now i'm going towards flock over static grass one it's cheaper and two the more i look into it the nicer the effect of flock is over static grass um, the board that I did, um, it did look okay, it did look nice, but f flock over static grass is, I'm starting to go that way. I never liked it and I'm starting to change how I, how I think. I don't know why, it's just the more I see with flock boards, do look better. So it's just something I'm trying and I thought, well, I might as well start by making my own flock. Now, I thought I'd show you 
Uh, this is the stuff that I made yesterday, uh, and I've mixed it in with uh, some of the really light green and uh, mid green uh, that I made yesterday. Uh, today, sorry. Um, and I'm just going to show you what it looks like now it's dry. Okay. This is mixed together because this is what I've made for my uh, trees and bushes and things like that. Um, I need to stop saying and things like that. <laughs> um, but yes, I'll, I'll just put it on this thing so you can see it. And then it's still slightly damp, but we're not far off. Okay, I'll just move the camera down so you can see. Okay, right guys. So, as you can see, look, it's just like, there's no difference in, uh, in the quality of it. It's very much like the Jarvis stuff. It's very flowery. Um, I'm such an idiot. I can't believe I mixed the stuff up. Um, <laughs> With the Jarvis stuff, I'm gonna have to buy some more for a comparison now. But it, putting that on bushes and trees, um, I like this because it's a bit darker, darker with a nicer highlight in it uh, than just the flat stuff that I'm gonna use on the ground. So when I do use this on trees and bushes, it's not gonna blend in with the ground. Okay, so that's why I've done this one. All right, but as you can see, it's a nice flock. And for the sake of a bag of sawdust and a bit of paint, guys, you can knock out some really nice flock. All right, so. Just move the camera back up. So it's definitely worth giving a shot yourself. Okay? It's not hard. Don't, all you've got to do is just you just look at it and see, see what you think. All right? It, there's no exact science, uh, like three parts, six parts to one part. It, it's different because it depends on how thick your sawdust is and everything. But sieve it twice. Uh, sieve it when, you know, before you put paint in it. Let it dry. Sieve it again. And you get a, you get a product that's you know worth buying. All right. So thanks for tuning in. Like I said, I didn't even think I'm going to do this as a video. You guys have asked. Um, so again, yes, there's a lot of videos like this out there. But I just thought I'd show you how much better this is to some of the videos I've seen because uh, some of it can be quite coarse. I am going to do a load of the coarse ground scatter as well because I'm going to be using that. Um, so in the next videos where I show you me doing work on tables and things like you know, you'll see me using my own flock now. I won't be buying any flock ever again. So, uh, and then after this, clumping flock. So, uh, I'm really trying to cut down on cost. Um, but yes, anyway, like, share, subscribe. If you really want to talk to me, guys, uh, look, look out for Luke's APS uh, Hangouts, Discussions, and whatever else it's called. Uh, just type that into Facebook, and uh, there's about 120 people on there now, so it's slowly creeping up. But the really nice guys, uh, and we're really good at you know sharing cheap alternatives. Um, so if you want to save some money, guys, get on that page, and we'll start communicating and saving some pounds. <laughs> All right. So I'll catch you soon. And just like I said, I'm sorry about the videos not as uploading as quick as at the moment. I'm very busy. Um, but like I said, I'm still trying to do one or two a week. All right. See you again soon. In a bit.